सो हेलो ब्रिफान आई होप एम ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल कैन यू ऑल गिव मी अ क्विक थम्स अप इफ माई ऑडियो वीडियो इज़ फाइन वेलकम इन द सेशन ऑफ मस्ट नो डॉर्मेटोलॉजी विद मी डॉक्टर चेष्टा अग्रवाल यू ऑन नीट पी जी एजुकेटर ऑन द बेस्ट ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म दैट इज़ एन अकेडमी नाउ टिल दी स्टूडेंट्स ज्वाइन एंड द अदर्स आई थिंक आई विल बी अवेलेबल Uh, let us start with the introduction so i am dr cheshta agarwal your nepd educator on the best online platform that is an academy now we are celebrating this republic day special where uh, the students will get 6 month extension on the subscription for one year and above please remember today we have the last date for this so anybody who is uh, Uh, interested in taking the an academy subscription i request them to take it today you need a code for this and the code is cheshta10 there are many many students who are taking this subscription uh, because it's actually like uh, you know 50% off so please do take it you will also get 10% additional discount i congratulate all the toppers of fmg uh, or all the students who have cleared the fmg exam this is the list for the month of january we are almost about to end and i will be soon disclosing or uh, soon update you with the february free classes now we have two type of subscriptions one is plus which give you an access to an academy live classes and iconic give you an access to both an academy and prep ladder we do have free live classes on the app so just download the app and watch these free live classes we have a highly updated and effective question bank of 25000 plus questions we have a feature which is known as raise a hand so if you have any doubt you can just raise your hand and ask your doubt the new batches or the batch which have started today was focus fmg batch the target neat pg batch i highly recommend all my students to please be a part of it this is the latest batch which will help you crack your neat pg 2022 and this is also the batch with ultra fast rapid revision of the 19 subjects along with mcq discussion uh, the grand test subject wise test etc i will be the part of these neat pg batches so i request all of you to please take them and this is a very very good subscription uh, 6750 is the price if you use it my code my name c h e s t a and 10 in front of it so let us start with the today's question and in my today's class i will be discussing a lot of mcqs and actually this is the fmg pyq series which i was about to do uh, tomorrow but i'm doing it today itself so <clears throat> requesting all of you uh, to please attend this fmg uh, series very very important fmg series where i will be discussing all the pyqs uh, of different years of fmg exam so i hope i'm audible and visible and there's no issue with the connection so please answer the first question of the today's session a 25 year old female came with chief complaints of vaginal discharge with lower abdominal pain and tenderness which color kit you will prescribe to her hello everyone hello uh, jyoti hello sparrow all of you varsha sumit everybody is welcome in this session <coughs> so a 25 year old female <coughs> presented with a chief complaint of vaginal discharge now there are many students who thought that it is vaginal discharge and there should be a green color kit which should be the answer but the green color kit was not given in the option they have only given the uh, different colors like gray red yellow black but they have added one very interesting feature of lower abdominal pain and if anybody have attended my classes i have told you that pid the color kit is yellow and how to remember in pelvic inflammatory disease if you do colposcopy you may find pus and pus is of yellow color so it's a very easy way of remembering the color of the kit so abdominal pain and tenderness indicates pelvic inflammatory disease and the color of the kit becomes yellow so i think everybody was right varsha sumit dr priya nizam pancake sparrow everyone this was the first question moving to the next question patient came to opd with complaints of diarrhea dermatitis mental retardation it was found that he is a maize eater which of the following could be the possible diagnosis direct question this was a fmg december exam question so anyone so uh, if you are uh, seeing it that uh, this topic 
it has been asked in uh, 2021 uh, in your neat pg in your inict and in your fmg so such a important topic this is for your all exams theek hai ji so what is this a case of very nice it's a case of pellagra and what is pellagra it is nothing but vitamin b3 or niacin deficiency vitamin b3 and niacin deficiency clear hai so diarrhea dermatitis and dementia or mental retardation the three d's of pellagra is here and if you were live in my uh, afternoon session i have shown you a classical image you have a burnt out appearance of the sun exposed regions in the patients of pellagra क्लियर है सबको कैन यू ऑल गिव मी अ क्विक थम्स अप इफ दिस इज क्लियर सुमित मर्जीना निजाम डॉक्टर सनल वर्षा पैनकेक एवरीवन थर्ड क्वेश्चन ऑल आर सीन इन दिस कंडीशन एक्सेप्ट सो देर वाज एन इमेज गिवन एंड यू हैव अ लॉट ऑफ फीचर्स सो यू हैव टू टेल मी व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज करेक्ट एंड आई थिंक दिस वाज द सेम इमेज यू गॉट इन योर एग्जाम आल्सो एनीबॉडी हु हैव गिवन द एफएमजी पेपर and who knows about this question anybody here who is live and who have given the paper jyoti sumit dr priya very very nice all of you all are seen in this condition except mundro microapsis wickham's triad sawtooth acanthosis seaweed bodies or shiny papules which of the following is the correct answer <coughs> okay so here first of all please look at the diagnosis and for that i need to zoom the image for you can you see this the lesions in the linear pattern can you tell me what is this this is the wrist part and you have lesions in a linear pattern so this is cobner's phenomena which is very classical of lichen planus lichen planus cobner's phenomena now starting from the lower point seaweed bodies yes you do see dyskeratotic uh, bodies which is seaweed bodies uh, you can see shiny plaques also or you can see white colored wickham striae saw toothing of the uh, retail edges is also a feature but micro mundro abscess this is a feature of psoriasis not like a planus so all are seen in this condition except option number 1 ठीक है आई होप एवरीथिंग इज क्लियर सुमित आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड ऑल द फोर ऑप्शन फॉर डिटेल डिस्कशन ऑफ लाइक एंड प्लेनर्स अगेन आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग दैट आई एम स्टार्टिंग विद द प्लस कोर्स ऑन 31st ऑफ जनवरी अ मस्ट नीडेड और अ मस्ट डू बैच सो प्लीज गेट योर सब्सक्रिप्शन टुडे यूजिंग द कोड chesta 10 chesta 10 which is around 6750 which give you a two month access to an academy please remember in this two month you can attend all the past courses all the present courses from any educator any number of time so that is amazing about an academy moving to the next patient on treatment with 13 cis retinoic acid which of the following is one of the side effect of this drug again this year december fmg paper so they have made a little twist instead of giving you the exact salt of the drug they have given the chemical structure name 13 cis retinoic acid so can you tell me what is this 13 cis retinoic acid what is this drug if you know the name you can definitely answer this anyone varsha sumit hazling pancake very nice can you tell me which drug we are talking about here we are talking about we are talking about isotretinoin we are talking about isotretinoin so please remember we are talking about isotretinoin and it has teratogenic effect it is said that if a patient is planning for pregnancy there should be at least 1 to 3 month strict contraception there should be 1 to 3 month strict contraception otherwise it can cause teratogenic side effects in the baby theek hai ji clear next identify this plant as shown in the image option number 4 i am not sure of but this is a very classical image and if anyone here who have attended my plus course i have already shown this image in my no, eczema topic so identify the plant shown in this image marzina dr priya pancake jyoti nizam everyone very very interesting identify the plant shown in this image <coughs> and yes this is parthenium plant this is also known as 
कांग्रेस ग्रास दिस इज ऑल्सो नोन एज गाजर ग्रास ओके सो दीज आर सम ऑफ दी कॉमनली यूज टर्मिनोलॉजीज फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर क्रॉप now it is a wild grass uh, can grow in any temperature any soil we do not need any proper uh, you know uh, fertilizers for its growth it just grow wildly now it consists of a allergen which is known as cess q turpine lecton which causes airborne contact dermatitis it causes allergy through the airborne contact ठीक है जी क्लियर ऑल ऑफ यू सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रिमेंबर दिस प्लांट दैट इज गाजर ग्रास ओके लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन पेशेंट प्रेजेंटेड विद हाइपो पिगमेंटेड मैक्यूल्स ओवर द बैक एंड अपर ट्रंक ऑन के ओ एच माउंट वी कुड सी स्पेगिटी एंड मीट बॉल अपियरेंस वॉट कैन बी दी पॉजिटिव एजेंट वॉट कैन बी दी पॉजिटिव एजेंट वर्षा ज्योति देन वी हैव पैन केक डॉक्टर प्रिया actually uh, dr priya it is not called as carrot grass uh, because uh, they call it as gajar grass i don't know whether that gajar is the exact carrot or not but uh, it is popularly known as gajar grass <clears throat> nothing to do with the carrot okay chalo very nice so kiran you are absolutely right the diagnosis here is pityriasis versicolor why this this particular name is given to this condition because pityriasis means what anyone can tell me what do you mean by pityriasis pityriasis means scale so pityriasis versicolor have fine scale and versicolor means variable color it can present with both hyper or hypopigmentation here in this patient we have hypopigmentation and it is because of a compound released by the species known as azelic acid the question is which is that uh, <clears throat> uh, species of fungus it is the melasesia furfur or melasesia globosa can anybody tell me which is more common furfur or globosa anyone we have 18 students which is more common cause for pityriasis versicolor melasesia furfur or melasesia globosa anyone varsha dr priya then we have pancake marzina jyoti hazeling dog nizam anyone can tell me the answer kiran sparo which is more common or more frequently associated furfur or globosa anyone <clears throat> a very nice hazeling dog it is the globosa species which is more common compared to that of furfur okay remember this because the old book says furfur but the new book says it is the globosa very nice sumit pancake nizam and hazeling dog moving to the next question patient present with the lesion as shown in the image later patient also develop arthritis what is the treatment so straight forward nothing they have not wasted time they have given you straight forward thing so look at this image on the trunk of the patient you can see multiple papules and plaque which are erythematous or red color and they have silvery micaceous like scales so i am giving you hint can you tell me what is the diagnosis cutaneous lesion followed by development of arthritis what this could be anyone can tell me the diagnosis varsha kiran jyoti anyone so cutaneous lesion with arthritis very classical of yes it is a case of psoriasis which develops arthritis so it becomes psoriatic arthritis and for psoriatic arthritis which is the drug of choice it is the methotrexate theek hai now we have variable we have different presentation of psoriasis we have chronic plaque psoriasis which is the most common one if suppose instead of arthritis they would have given simple psoriasis only the skin lesions which is shown no arthritis can you tell me what will be the uh, answer then i hope you have understood suppose there is no arthritis now what will be the answer will it remain same or it will change anyone jyoti pancake ramya and other students i can see a lot of new students coming so please tell me the answer you all have told me that if it is psoriatic arthritis the answer becomes methotrexate but i am saying that instead of psoriatic arthritis if he is a patient of chronic plaque psoriasis what will be the diagnosis will it change or not 
Okay, so Nizam says that yes, it will change. It will become option number three. Anybody else want to add anything? Ramya, Pancake, Jyoti, Marzina, uh, Hazling Dog, Kiran. <clears throat> okay, so more students for option number three. Please remember, even in chronic plaque psoriasis, the treatment remains same. Nothing will change. The drug of choice remains cro uh, for chronic plaque for psoriatic arthritis. It is methotrexate only. Very nice, Kiran and Jyoti. Okay? You will not prefer mycophenolate morphetil. Why? It is expensive. More side effect. Rituximab, expensive. Cyclophosphamide, again, it is expensive and has a more side effect profile compared to methotrexate which is a very cheap alternate you can get this drug in a very cheap alternate plus lesser side effect weekly dosing everything is favorable okay so methotrexate becomes the drug of choice for both these conditions okay very very nice coming to the next question a female student presents with urticaria following intake of a seafood i think this is the june 2021 question fmg june 2021 question <clears throat> Okay, now so she wants a non sedating drug since this is her exam time. Which is the preferred antihistaminic for this patient? Anyone, which is the preferred antihistaminic? We have discussed this question so many times, it's a frequent repeat, and this is FMG June 2021 paper question. <coughs> <coughs> okay, gee. Manasa says it's option number four, Dr. Richpal for option number four. Uh, then we have Vandan, Dr. Priya, everybody is right. The correct answer is option number four, that is fexofenadine. And why? Because fexofenadine belongs to a second generation antihistaminic, which is comparatively less sedating. First three are the first generation and that will cause more sedation. So I think it's an easy question. Next question, the, uh, the image uh, may vary or may differ. I think this was not the exact image. Uh, the image was different in your exam but the question was same what could be the diagnosis for this image this is fmge june 2021 question i think we are done with december questions this is uh, 2021 june paper shiramya marzina jyoti sumit dr sanil nizam hazling doc <coughs> very nice so we have 28 students right now very nice all of you i think clear cut image if i zoom this i can see that you have a patchy hair loss and the skin is smooth no erythema no scaling so whenever you have patchy, patchy alopecia with smooth skin no itching no scaling it has to be a case of alopecia areata and what is alopecia areata alopecia areata is an autoimmune disease where you, where you have T lymphocyte directed against the pigmented part of the hair. This is not telogen effluvium. How this could be telogen effluvium? By telogen effluvium is an example of diffuse hair loss. But you can see only a patch of hair loss, right? So you cannot comment it as either telogen effluvium or anagen effluvium. Both of them have diffuse hair loss. Trichotillomania is patchy, but you will see the hairs of different length on that part. But that is not the case here. So it's a very clear cut case of alopecia areata. Is this clear? Varsha, Richpal, uh, then we have Achan, uh, Pancake, Marzina, Shiramya, Sparrow, Jyoti, everyone. Next question. Another question from FMGE, June 2021. A patient farmer or gardener by occupation presented with the following lesions. You can see that foot shows a lot of swelling, there is sinuses or pus coming out through these sinus tracts. <coughs> Anyone can tell me the answer. Mycetoma, chromoblastomycosis, sporotrichosis or pheohyphomycosis. Uh, Farooq Azam, treatment of alopecia areata if you are asking, it is intralesional steroid. Okay, if you're asking treatment of choice, if you get that question in your exam, please mark intralesional steroid as the best possible answer. Not oral, not topical, intralesional steroids. I hope that is clear. Now, very nice, Ramya, Sparrow, Pancake, <coughs> Nizam. If I zoom this image, you can see that there is swelling, there is sinus, and if I keep a gauze over it overnight, I could see the grains. So what is this a classical triad? What is this a classical triad? 
tumor tumorous growth then sinus and grain all these are very very classical of mycetoma all these are very classical of mycetoma mycetoma is of two type one is u mycetoma and another is actinomycetoma can you tell me can anybody tell me how to differentiate both u mycetoma from actinomycetoma i just want your answer in one word anything with respect to the grain how to differentiate between both u mycetoma and actinomycetoma please remember u mycetoma will have a black grain and actinomycetoma will have a yellow color grain u mycetoma is a true fungal mycetoma it is slowly growing but more deforming while actinomycetoma is a bacterial mycetoma which has a rapid growth but less deformity and yellow color granules both these are very important for your exam frequently asked questions so try to remember these features very very important very nice manasa varsha dr priya pancake tony kritika jyoti everyone nizam <clears throat> so that is all about the differences now coming to the next question 70 year old patient develops the falling lesions over the face since 2 years what can be the diagnosis <clears throat> what can be the diagnosis a 70 year old patient develops the following lesions over the face since 2 years <clears throat> so you can see that there is a small nodule which actually got ulcerated there are at few places you can see the pus coming out even the bleeding you can see thread like everted margin beaded margin so i'm giving you a lot of hint very nice slowly progressing nodule with ulceration very classical of basal cell carcinoma and what is this ulcer called as slowly progressing ulcer with beaded margin or thread like margin everted margin what is this ulcer called as this is known as <coughs> rodent ulcer this is known as rodent ulcer very very important why not melanoma manasa please remember melanoma have flat lesions the raised lesions are not very frequent theek okay? hai first of all very very important you do see the raised lesions in the nodular melanoma but here it shows a very characteristic site and uh, you know very characteristic uh, appearance they has uh, can you see the beads over here i don't know how uh, clear is the image but just look at this can you see swelling then plain then swelling then plain so it it has a beaded sort of margin so this type of beaded sort of margin is very frequent with basal cell carcinoma okay clear i i hope manasa i'm able to clear your doubt let's move to the next question again this is a question i think this is 2020 december fmg paper exam or uh, june exam i'm not sure <clears throat> june 2021 or december 2020 a young lady presents with lacy lesions in the oral cavity her proximal nail fold have extended onto the nail bed what is the likely diagnosis very nice now a small notice if uh, if you like the way i teach dermatology please do join my course which is starting on 31st of january use my code cheshta10 to get yourself enrolled you can take a 2 month short subscription just for your revision which is of 6750 so take a short subscription of an academy where all the 19 subjects will be discussed in a very amazing way so if you want to revise or if you want to practice this is a right time now any mbbs students uh, like any third year or final year students who is right now live with me we are going on with the offer which is the republic day offer where you have 6 month free so if you take today is the last day if you take a one year subscription uh, using the same code you will get 6 month additional free only for today theek hai chalo the answer to this question is option number 3 so this is a very classical reticular type of lichen planus and what is this nail change we are talking about we are talking about dorsal pterygium we are talking about dorsal pterygium which is the most specific nail feature of lichen planus can anybody tell me which is the most common nail feature of lichen planus anyone marzina hazling dog jyoti then we have uh, raja shekhar pancake sparrow farooq manasa shri ramya which is the most common nail finding most specific i have told you it is dorsal pterygium but which is the most specific <clears throat> 
any one oh, sorry most specific i have told you which is the most common <coughs> uh ma'am at the end please suggest a good medical college for dama <laughs> okay so you can come to my medical college uh, i have done my md from rnd medical college udaipur like i have chosen uh, this medical college on my rank 261 i got 261 rank in my all india neat pg <clears throat> general category and i actually chose this medical college it's a good college but definitely uh, and manasa you can just uh, uh, you know uh approach me on the telegram group i will be sharing the group in the end so if you have any doubts related to that the correct answer of most common nail feature of lichen planus is thinning of the nail very nice it is not pitting kahan se aa gaya pitting dr priya manasa marzina i am talking about lichen planus did i tell psoriasis i am talking about lichen planus the most common finding it is thinning of the nail pitting is the most common feature of psoriasis if i have told psoriasis then pitting is right but if i told lichen planus then thinning of the nail is the correct answer theek hai ji okay <clears throat> identify the condition shown in the image this is also one of the favorite question of fmg <clears throat> examiners <clears throat> identify the condition shown in the image condyloma acuminata bowen's disease condyloma lata hemorrhoidus which of the following is the correct answer anyone very nice varsha koshik and dr priya this is a image of genital wart which is known as condyloma acuminata theek hai now genital warts is because of hpv 6 and 11 and i'm sure this everybody knows what is condyloma lata it is a feature of secondary syphilis where you have moist flat top the lesions but here they are not flat top they are rough so if they are rough it should be acuminata and if they are flat topped lata type late way so it is condyloma lata now a patient presented with the following lesion what is the diagnosis again a fmg question but i think the image of the face was given there was a patch here on the jaw line unilateral can you tell me what can be the answer here <clears throat> patient presented with the following lesion diagnosis hypomelanosis of eto vitiligo segmental and nevus of eto baker's nevus which of the following is the correct answer <clears throat> dr priya bandana very nice manasa the correct answer is segmental vitiligo and if you can see that it is not crossing the midline remember segmental vitiligo never crosses the midline there is a sharp demarcation in the midline okay it it occurs on a single dermatome it has comparatively good prognosis compared to other generalized forms of vitiligo theek hai yes so inct and fmg question so this is also again one of the favorite question of the examiner this is 2020 fmg question ulcer with overhanging undermined edges i have today only discussed this image very important in your exam so what is this tubercular lymph nodes malignant cervical lymphadenopathy syphilis or reactive lymphadenopathy <clears throat> what is the correct answer here ulcer with overhanging and undermined edges i think it's clear it is the cervical part in cervical part we have cervical lymph nodes and sometimes there is tuberculosis of these lymph nodes which get extended onto the overlying skin and this is known as scrofuloderma or tubercular lymph node so the correct answer becomes option number 1 very nice tony marzina rajashekhar pancake ramya varsha richpal amazing nuclear uh, you you all have amazing names actually <laughs> okay ji chalo good so let's let's move to the next question uh nobody have <coughs> marzina nuclear briefcase uh, tony bai then marzina rajashekar pancake very very nice all of you which mineral deficiency can lead to following condition zinc iron calcium or vitamin a <coughs> i'm very sorry actually my throat is still not uh, in a very good condition but 
yes it is better than the last few days very nice uh, so welcome kostu uh, welcome to the class and yes you all are right dr priya varsha ramya sparo kiran bandana farooq manasa you can see that the lesions are classically around the orifices here it is around the mouth and here it is around the genitals so peri orificial dermatitis peri orificial dermatitis peri orificial dermatitis is classical of zinc okay and yes majority of you know about it it is the acrodermatitis enteropathica if it is congenital it can be acquired also first line treatment of acne comedone this is the fmge uh december 2020 or june 2020 question <clears throat> uh, thank you jyoti i am better uh, you know like i had a very uh, you know high fever yesterday and day before yesterday but today i am much much better first line treatment for acne comedone topical steroids topical antibiotic benzoyl peroxide and topical retinoid which of the following is correct <clears throat> Okay yes uh, so here you can see acne comedones if if i uh, zoom this image can you see these black dots are actually the open comedones and you can also see closed comedones can you see this these are the closed comedones which are present so presence of comedones means grade 1 acne and for this you need topical retinoid that is <clears throat> a keratolytic agent you just need a keratolytic drug to take care of these lesions theek hai ji rajesh ekar nuclear kiran all of you next question identify the condition again fmge 2020 paper question <clears throat> here you can see a old patient with a irregular macule which is having irregular borders variegate color you know and uh, Uh, there is a progression if if there is more history given although it is not given here so what is this a case of yes i have given you a lot of hint now somebody was asking in the past question my ma'am why that is not a malignant melanoma so now can you compare both the uh, lesions in basal cell carcinoma there will be a history of nodule which is ulcerated now so that is called as rodent ulcer and here you will have a flat lesion a macule and it is sometimes known as hutchison's freckle it is sometimes called as hutchison's freckle theek hai ji this is a case of lentigo maligna type of malignant melanoma lentigo maligna type of malignant melanoma next question which organism is responsible for causing erysipelas now please remember uh, why the ear is looking pink it is the effect of camera so <coughs> it's the effect of camera otherwise you never see such a, you know bright pink ear uh, it 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 has erythema i totally agree but it is the effect of camera that the color got you know little more prominent <clears throat> which organism is responsible for causing erysipelas streptococcus staphylococcus bacteroides or fungus very nice bandana manasa then we have varsha tony everybody is right it is streptococcus and do you remember in this year neat 2021 there was a question on erysipelas only they have given an image where there was a linear lesion on the i think upper limb was given and in addition to that they have uh, either given the image of Uh, you know nail fold infection i hope you remember that so they have asked the treatment so you should know that erysipelas and peronychia both occurs because of streptococcus and for streptococcus you give amoxicillin so one of the option was amoxicillin how many of you remember that theek <clears> hai <throat> so this is a case of streptococcus induced erysipelas cutaneous one again a 2020 fmg paper question cutaneous horn as shown in the image is associated with which of the following skin cancers squamous cell carcinoma melanoma bcc or actinic keratosis <clears throat> again it's a easy question a old question we have discussed it so many times abhi tak yes very very nice 
cutaneous horn if it is not taken care of it can convert into a malignancy and very well done all of you it is squamous cell carcinoma so whenever you see a cutaneous horn always excise it and send it to histopathological examination moving to next question moving to the next question this question uh, we have already done uh, but it got repeated twice and that is why it is here on the uh, board now the next question patient suffering from ulcerative colitis presented with ulcer on the anterior leg as shown in the image diagnosis <clears throat> kiran marzina manasa nobody then uh, pancake rajpal varsha yes so we have a background of ulcerative colitis and in addition to that we have a rapidly progressing ulcer now I, if you remember my old classes have told you that villaceous border and cribriform scar cribriform scar healing is from cribriform scar and villaceous borders in addition to the history of ulcerative colitis not responding to the antibiotic therapy or sterile conditions think about neutrophilic dermatosis that is pyoderma gangrenosum okay pyoderma gangrenosum <coughs> common complication associated with the following condition <coughs> anyone uh, i think the image is self explanatory can you tell me what can be the diagnosis looking at the image what can be the diagnosis looking at the image common complication associated with the following condition post streptococcal glomerulonephritis staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome encephalitis or pneumonitis very nice all of you this is a case of non bullous impetigo okay because here you can see honey colored crust honey colored crust means a non bullous impetigo patient and please remember post streptococcal glomerulonephritis is the common complication very nice i am so happy that everybody is participating and you all are answering it right again fmg repeat question a tourist guide in the mount everest after one of his trip develops blister on the feet which is not useful for this treatment hyperbaric oxygen aspirin phenylephrin or pentoxyphylin <clears throat> tourist guide on the mount everest what is the answer here nice dr kostov you are right anybody else now this is a case of frostbite you can see that there is a blister have developed on the finger this is a case of frostbite theek okay. hai now what happens whenever you have frostbite first of all what is the main cause because of the temperature outside uh, the cool temperature outside there is persistent vasoconstriction which causes cyanosis or uh, you know decrease or hypoxia of the part supplied by that blood vessel so for treatment you need to give something which either causes vasodilatation or which causes more blood to go there or which causes more oxygen to reach there so everything is improving the circulation except phenylephrine which is causing vasoconstriction so you will not give uh, you know vasoconstrictive agent that is option number 3 here <clears throat> clear hai so here i can see a lot of students getting confused please remember everything can be given except phenylephrine which is a vasoconstrictor so it will actually exacerbate the frostbite related symptoms theek hai next <clears throat> this is again a very favorite question of a lot of exams <clears throat> patient presents with a history of severe sunburn after only a few minutes in the sun freckling if you remember i have told you one day that photosensitivity with freckle one thing should come into your mind and i think majority of you are thinking the same it is zero derma pigmentosa and what is the main problem it is a nucleotide excision repair defect it is a nucleotide excision repair defect very very important all my dear students <clears throat> next question 
the next question is on your computer screen can you tell me the answer child presence with soreness in the mouth rash on the hand what is the diagnosis yes exactly so uh, it's it's good kostub if this image is in your memory try to put uh, the image of pelagra <coughs> <coughs> so pelagra is also a very favorite question <coughs> few things you have to keep in your mind because uh, you know they are the favorite questions from the exam i don't know why they do that that like if they are giving one exam uh, one question they should at least change the question in the next exam but they tend to repeat it the answer here is obviously yes option number 1 because it's a classical image of hand foot and mouth disease hand foot and mouth disease again a 2020 fmg question paper next question i think we are almost uh, about to end the class child present with fever and pleomorphic rash as shown in the image what can be the diagnosis very nice richpal tony uh, marzina varsha rajashekhar nobody sparrow <clears throat> ma'am you are asking easy questions uh, these are all repeat questions uh, i am not asking it myself uh, i am discussing the pyqs of fmg so yes fmg is uh, they are asking the easy questions we have already discussed the question from uh, the december 2021 we are done with june 2021 and i think uh, these questions which i am discussing right now they are 2022 fmg direct pyqs i'm not adding anything theek hai ji so please remember this is a very easy question from chicken pox fever and a pleomorphic rash fever and a pleomorphic rash i think this there are uh, two more questions left this was uh, i'm not sure whether it was an fmg paper question or i have by mistake uh, you know took it from neet pg but anyways uh, only two questions left so very very quickly the time of reading of a patch test for allergic contact dermatitis according to international contact dermatitis research group can you tell me the correct answer please tell me the correct answer yes the correct answer to this question is option number 3 and i can see that majority have marked option number 2 no it is option number 3 the correct answer is this on day 2 and day 4 you need to remove and read the patch theek hai not 4872 it is 4896 which is the correct answer so please do make changes it is not 4872 theek hai the correct answer is option number 3 and the last question of the today's session this was once a favorite question of aims but now they have forgot about this disease or this infection now we have a lot lot of new infections to be worried about so this was once a very very much uh, you know concern so what is the answer here the last question pigmentation on the centro facial area with a history of joint pain what is the answer <clears throat> Yes, very nice. Richpal, Manasa, Shri Ramya. This is chick sign, and this is a patient of chicken gunia fever. So chick sign with chicken gunia fever, and with this we are done with the today's session. Thank you all of you for this class. Please subscribe this free YouTube channel that is Let's Crack Neat PG. For any discussion, any query, you can join the Telegram group. The name is same. Let's Crack Neat PG. Just tag me and ask the doubt. use this code for an academy subscription we have a lot of offers going on i would highly recommend a 2 month subscription of 6750 rupees which is worth taking uh, if you want to have a quick revision and today the last day for 6 month subscription free if you get a 1 year or longer subscription use the same code don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get all the notifications of my class and yes please give a thumbs up to this video the thumbs up is much needed so thank you all of you bye bye take care good day all the best we'll see you tomorrow at 4:30 pm till then bye bye